The Maine legislature passed LD 1578, sending it to the governor for her signature. By neither signing nor returning the bill for 10 days under the Maine Constitution, the bill becomes law. Article 4, Part 3rd, Section 2 of the Maine Constitution states, If the bill or resolution shall not be returned by the governor within 10 days, Sundays accepted, after it shall have been presented to the governor, it shall have the same force and effect as if the governor had signed it, unless the legislature by their adjournment prevents its return. Because Maine uses ranked choice voting, this makes the process of appointing their electors rather convoluted. From LD 1578. In a presidential election determined by ranked choice voting, when the National Popular Vote for President Act governs the appointment of presidential electors, the following procedures are used to determine the presidential vote count. Except that, Notwithstanding subsection 3, a statewide tie between candidates in the final round may not be resolved and the provisions of subsection 4 regarding the modification of the ballot and count are permitted. Until the states illegally claim that the National Popular Vote Compact is in force, Maine will continue to appoint their electors with the ranked choice system they have in place. Since the NPV Compact does not have the consent of Congress, the states are not allowed to join the compact. And I'm pretty sure it's illegal for the states to follow an agreement they have not legally joined. However, once Maine claims the national popular vote does govern their elections, they still go through the ranked choice voting process. Why? I mean, after all, since the citizens of Maine are no longer choosing their presidential electors, why go through all the time, effort, and confusion of ranked choice voting for presidential electors when it will not impact the outcome of the election? According to Section 803 of LD 1578, as soon as possible after the canvas of the presidential count under Section 723A, subsection 7, is determined, the governor shall send a certificate of determination containing the names of the electors and the statewide number of votes for each presidential slate that received votes in the final round of the, to the Archivist of the United States under state seal. This final round vote is deemed to be the determination of the vote in the state for the purpose of Section 1304. So the governor is going to send the certificate of appointed electors to the Archivist of the United States as required by another unconstitutional law, Title III, USC Section 5, no later than the date that is six days before the time fixed for the meeting of the electors, the executive of each state shall issue a certificate of assessment and appointment of electors under and in pursuance of the laws of such state, providing for such appointment and ascertainment enacted prior to Election Day. However, when those electors vote, they're not doing so based on the decision of the citizens of Maine. Rather, they would be required by law to vote based on the winner of the fictitious national popular vote from LD 1578. Notwithstanding subsection 2, when the National Popular Vote for President Act governs the appointment of presidential electors, the presidential electors shall cast their ballots for the presidential slate designated as the National Popular Vote winner pursuant to Section 1304. In other words, you can easily have a Republican slate of electors being forced to vote for a Democratic candidate or vice versa. Remember, the governor has already sent to the Archivist of the United States a certificate listing not only the slate of electors, but the number of votes for each presidential slate. This means Maine's fraud will be a matter of public record. Imagine you're one of those electors who are chosen by the people to represent one candidate, but are compelled by law to vote for someone else. What if you're a citizen of Maine, having gone through the process of ranked choice voting, only to have your vote ignored because your state lied to you about the national popular vote and decided to place the wishes of the rest of the country above those of their citizens, all in the pursuit of a lie. Would that not be a fraudulent election?